Before you start on your installation, there's a few things you'll want to check first. Clear your installation area of anything that might get in the way during assembly. For this building, we're putting it onto a raised wooden framework to help protect it from damp and insects. We would always recommend installing on a dry day, with a minimum of two people. To erect this summer house, you'll need a screwdriver, a drill, a hammer, a tape measure, a rubber mallet, a ladder and a Stanley knife or cutting tool. Starting off by removing the transportation blocks from each of the panels with a few taps from a hammer. They're nailed in so don't try to pry them off. It's best to lay out the doors first so that you can make sure that the hinges are level. Line the hinges up at equal distances at the top and bottom of the doors. Pre-drill through each of the screw holes before affixing the hinges with screws. Use a tape measure to position the middle hinges and repeat this for each door, including the side door. We'll install the locks later once the doors are up on the building. Make sure to pre-drill all screws throughout this installation. It can take time but will prevent damage to the timber. Place the floor panels down onto the prepared base and make sure that the bearers are flush with the supports. It's at this point that you can decide whether you want the side store on the left or the right of the main building. Place the floor joining blocks half underneath the edge of the floor, equally spaced between each floor joist and secure with screws. You can then place the second floor panel in position and use the screws as a guide to secure the other side. Position the side store floor flush at either side and screw diagonally through the joist to secure it to the main floor. Start the main body of the installation with one of the rear panels and one of the sides to form an L-shaped join. Press the framing firmly together and secure them with screws at the top, middle and bottom. You can now bring in the other back and side panels and repeat this for the corner framing. Adjoin the two back panels through the framework before moving on to the dividing wall. Position the panel against the centre framing of the back panel and secure in place. Next you will need to place the wall gables onto the panels. These can be a tight fit and you need to make sure that the tongue and groove boards interlock on the sides. Use a mallet to tap these into place and secure with screws through the framing. The next step is to work on the front. Place the front gable down flat and place the door panels within the aperture. Position the hinges over the edge of the frame and secure through with screws. With the doors fitted, you will need to install the front window panel. This is secured in the same way as the other panels. Move the door panel into position and secure the same way with screws on either side of the top, middle and bottom. With the walls in place, you can now secure the internal framing down to the floor to prevent any movement. Repeat this at equal intervals around the entire building. For the next step, you need to position the side store wall against the dividing wall panel and secure in place. You can now secure the side store door frame to the front of the building. The final small wall gable needs to be fitted on top of the side door wall as before. Position the side store door within the frame and secure the hinges in place. With all the walls in place, you can now position the veranda. Place the boards in front of the door panels, making sure that the two panels align and are flush with the edge of the building. Secure these using screws diagonally through the framing and into the door panel. Slide the roof panel up onto the gables until it reaches the front of the building covering the side store and leaving an overhang at the front. Secure it in place through the board and into the framing of the gables below, along each edge and repeat for the second panel. The roof strips need to be placed on the back of the building and positioned to close the gap where the roof meets the back panels. These should be flush with the edge of the roof and secured with screws. The roof framing also needs to be attached in the same way and made flush with the top of the roof board. With the felt, either measure the length of your roof with a tape measure, adding a few extra inches either end for overhang, or as we've done here, you can roll it out along the length of your building and cut to size. Use a Stanley knife or cutting tool to cut the felt for a nice clean finish. For this building, you will need three strips of equal length which will overlap to cover the roof. Start at the back of the roof and work forward to create an effective water runoff. Tack the felt along the length of the roof to secure it in position, and then evenly along the sides. Repeat this for the other two strips of felt, overlapping the previous piece each time. You can now place the roof undercover in position. 
We found it easiest to position it in place and then mark it with a pencil to align the framing before securing with screws. With the roof felted, it's time for the trims. Fold the felt down so that it's sandwiched firmly between the fascia and the edge of the roof. Secure these at each end and the middle and repeat for each fascia of the building. Don't worry if there is some excess felt under the fascia. This can simply be cut away with a sharp knife. Align the corner trims over the side panel framing and then secure in place at the top, middle and bottom with 30mm screws. Repeat this for all the corners and panel joints. You may need to cut some of the strips down slightly to fit. The next step is to fit the locks and door handles. Position the lock mounting plate over the pre-cut lock hole and secure with screws into the door frame. Secure the lock over the plate in each corner. The door stop needs to be placed over the lower corner and screwed into the framing. Use a spirit level to mark out holes for the door handle, then drill through to allow space for the bolts. Thread the bolts through and affix the door handle in place with a screwdriver. Place the door lock into the pre-cut recess and thread the handlebar through the mechanism. Secure the lock plate with screws before affixing the handles over the bar on each side. Screw these down to the door. Affix a bolt at the top and bottom of each door before drilling a bolt hole into the framing to secure the lock. A turn button should then be installed on the top and bottom of the slave door. Score around the edge of the window framing with a sharp knife on both the inside and outside of the window glazing. You should then be able to peel the protective plastic off the windows. Now that your summer house is installed, you'll want to treat it with a good quality timber preservative to keep it protected throughout the year. For more installations, please check out the other videos on our channel or visit waltons.co.uk.